video. Well, today we're going to dive into something a little different. These are the Clips RP600M speakers that I really like. And yes, these are the Model 1s that people say have got this big hole in the frequency response and they're too bright and that kind of thing. I like the way they sound. I do have them set up in a pretty unique way, this bay window of my house, and it really gives kind of this amphitheater reinforcement for the base out of this rear port. And, you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but in my room, with my gear, they really sound good. So I don't want to start screwing around with them too much. And I know Danny over at GR has, like, kits to supposedly fix a frequency response, but it also makes them less efficient. And I've got a lot of low power amps that I don't want to really do something that's going to screw up the synergy between these speakers and my amplifiers. And I've tuned the shade feedback in a lot of my tube amps to work specifically with these speakers in my room. So I did pull out the crossover and notice that the capacitors look like just kind of generic film caps. And while they seem to do a great job, I know how good these Mundorf aluminum oil caps sound and my tube amps use as coupling caps. So I talked to some of my friends that do a lot of work on speaker crossovers and they told me the main cap that you need to be concerned with is the one on the tweeter because the signal goes through that cap to get to the tweeter where the one on the woofer is across the speaker and isn't directly in the signal path. And so I ordered a couple of these 3.9 UF, which are exactly what's in here, Mundorf aluminum oil caps. We're going to open the speaker up and toss these caps in and then give them a little while to burn in and see what they sound like. So let's get busy fixing these speakers. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and take this rear port off. Use your little three millimeter Allen wrench. Take those screws out, pull this board out, and that just gives you another opening to reach in here and help move wires around. Then the next thing you want to do is pull off the speaker terminal slash crossover board. It's all connected here together. The other thing that I think I'm going to do while I'm working on this is I'm going to go ahead and jumper between these two terminals because I'm never going to buy amp these speakers and then I'm not dependent on those little straps there to actually connect it. Because if you try to use these terminals with a wire put through here, when you tighten it back down, this little plate thing is just sitting there loose. And so if you're using banana plugs, it's not a big deal, but if you're trying to use wires just put through the hole in the jack, that doesn't work. So just to eliminate that as being an issue, since we're never going to be biamping these, I'm going to stick a jumper wire across those internally. But mainly we're going here to replace these capacitors, or the capacitor. And this is a little, you got to kind of wiggle like that. And there's the board. Kind of pull this like that, and then that gives you a little more room to work with. And the capacitor we're going to be replacing is this little guy right here. So, first thing I'm going to do is get a screwdriver and take these screws out so we can get the board off of this backing thing. And that'll give us a little more room to work. I'm trying to do this, disconnecting as few things as possible. Like I said earlier, all I'm wanting to do is put a higher quality coupling cap here in that position and if you're ever wondering how similar an RP160M and an RP600M are got both part numbers on this crossover okay so now we can flip this guy over so we're gonna be taking this guy out 
that means it's this solder joint and that solder joint. And I'm going to come in here with my soldering wick and mop up as much solder off that joint as we can. And it looks like they might have bent that lead over. Okay, so then when you get the majority of the solder mopped up like I just did, you come to the other side and they've glued this capacitor to this board. And so you're going to have to kind of go like this and break it loose. And just like that. We come in with our new capacitor. You can see this guy's much a much larger capacitor and much higher quality. But it's the exact same value. It's a 3.9 UF. And let's go ahead and get our contact cement ready after we kind of bin the wires the way we want them. Going to try to fit it like that. That looks beautiful right there. Like that. And then you just want to make sure you got enough room there to put that screw back in. Then we're going to flip this guy over. Solder these back in place. Just like that. Okay, and then the last thing that we want to do is I want to look at how this is done. Okay, that's plus and that's plus. So we need to put a jumper from here to there and then we need to put a jumper across here. Now what I'm probably going to do on this side is just cut a piece of this lead from this coupling cap. And solder it just like that. There we go. And that's got our two negative terminals connected together. And then we want to go ahead and hook this positive and that positive together and actually it looks like this these two planes are being tied together so I think yeah we can just put a little jumper wire across there just like we did on the other side so you just jumper these two jumper those two then you don't have to worry about those biamp strips on the back of the speaker terminal and you can just hook any of them up okay so now we want to put our screws back in place and we're almost done obviously if you're planning on biamping these speakers you don't want to put those jumpers in and you would just install that capacitor and honestly, if I was going to be bi-amping speakers, I would be putting an active crossover on the front end of the amps and then just hooking them directly to the speakers anyway and not using the passive crossover inside the amp. So then the next step is pop our little guy in here. Spread those leads apart. Put our baseboard in, pull our screws back in, and we have our modified speaker. Pretty simple, huh? 
Well, well, I put the rest of these screws in. This looks like a good place to wrap up this video. As you can see, fairly easy project. Just flip the crossover out, desolder the cap, solder the new one in, flip the crossovers back in. Been listening to them for a couple of days to let these things break in, and it's not a huge change. And again, this could be just my brain thinking, hey, you've got caps in here that are better. It's going to do more detail or something. But I think I am hearing cleaner detail out of these speakers now. Not that they were bad before. And this isn't really a night and day difference. But this wasn't to fix or change what they sound like. It was just to bring out a little better of what was already there. And I think this did help. It's not a big cost outlay. And putting better components in the signal path, especially coupling capacitors like these are in the speaker crossover, is always a good idea. And if you do this upgrade, do give these capacitors a day or two to break in. They don't need 200 hours, but you definitely want to play music through them for at least probably 8 or 10 hours for these caps to like calm down and become as transparent as they're going to. They don't need 150 or 200 hours like some people are going to try to tell you, but I do feel like they need probably, you know, 6, 8, 10 hours, somewhere around in there. You know, I've listened to some fairly loud music through them to really get them to like calm down and be what they're going to be. So if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon folks, folks that have made donations to my channel to help support it. And until next time, have a nice day.